been here and we took off my head, I think just a little corny, but when I was at this school 15 years or so ago, we didn't have it, such a thing as homecoming. People had dogged Norman football team all year long. And uh, so finally, for the last two weeks, I've been able to dog them back. And uh, I know we'll be able to do it after tomorrow night's game. I think Rob Knight might take it in the last game, too. So I hope you guys can just take that from the last game of the year. And
with in action. The boys won, uh, placed fifth in the regional tournament and qualified for state for the 16th straight time. Travis Schaefer won overall for the boys. And the girls' side of things, Sandy Clymer placed second, and the girls placed first overall and are going to state for the 10th straight time in their career. Next up in scores, we have Longfellow 8th grade taking on the Whittier 8th grade and winning that, that Longfellow is 36-24. to 24. Next, we have Midwest City taking on Putnam City West, probably the best game of the year by any standard in high school action this year in 5A. Midwest City ultimately wins 42-35. to 35. Let's take a look at the highlights of that game. See, Brad Norman scores off a great draw play early in the first half. Next, number 25 for Midwest City gets the ball stripped away by Putnam City West, who comes back on offense. Here, and Drew Christman will get the last laugh because he's intercept the football and return it 61 yards for the score. Cale Gundy and Drew Christman had this to say after the game. Yeah, I give Pump City West all the credit, you know, because they got the best team I've played ever since I'm 17 years old. That's the best team I've ever played, you know. They got a great defense and they got a real good offense. Brandon Holmes is a great running back. I was, I was, you know, I just got to wonder if this game was ever going to end. It was just going back and forth, back and forth. But you got to give both teams a lot of credit. This game was, was highly important. We knew that it was going to be a, a dog fight from, you know, the get go. They come out, every time they play, so, you know, they're sky high. They're feeling really good. Good football team, you know. They, they, mentally, they're strong. Physically, they're strong and they're fast. We had we have yet to play a team as fast, you know, that could run with us on the field. And tonight, they did that. Offensive and defensive line, you know, they played excellent. They, early in the game, they had a few breakdowns, you know, had a little trouble, but they snapped back. Coaches got them back online, and we did okay. For me personally, this was just another game. We, I feel that we have to come out and we, if we play the best of our ability, we can play on the field with anybody, you know, in the state. I mean, there are teams out there. There are teams out there that can't beat us, you know. And we realize that, so we have to work harder every week. But for me personally, this was, this was a, you know, this was a tough game for us. Me, I knew that I was going to play, you know, above my head tonight, and so we had a lot of people to come out on top. Next, we have Norman High School and homecoming taking on Northwest Classen and thumping Classen Knights by the score of 40 to nothing. Let's take a look at those highlights. Here, Wade Hand picks up a fumble by Northwest Class and returns it all the way down to the 12-yard line. Here, Jacob Tindall has one of the better runs of the evening, a 20-yard run down to the 42-yard line. It's hard to get real enthusiastic about a team like that. And most all week we practice, you know, looking forward to Martin. And then again, you think if the ground's going to go out and take it, you know, come out to you'll hit something really good and take advantage of it. But the thing you get in the open field, I know I can get away. You had enough to do with the linemen, secondary, the second team linemen. They had a key role in it, and I owed them a lot. It was very important. We came out, you know, we wanted to win. We just wanted to set the ball game straight, make sure we had everything under control. And we really wanted to win this game. We proved that we could do it. Now I think we're ready for a lot in It was a good win, though, from the same point that we got to play a lot of kids. I think we got everybody in the ball game who's been in practice and everything. And, and uh, we got to relax on the sideline. You don't, you don't get to do that sometimes. So, sometimes and, and, uh, so it, it was enjoyable. It, it really was. We had to uh, get, get hurt, though. We kept hating. Hurt his knee pretty bad. And, uh, Right hand hurt his shoulder in, in the contest, so that kind of takes away from from the victory. But, but yes, it, it was a, a close and difficult kid. Time for our athlete of the week, sponsored by Paul Pratt. Let's take a look at who it is this week. And as you can see, it's Cody Kavner who had a great second half for the Norman Tigers. Now we're going to look at the standings in Division One Five A. As you can see, Edmond six and zero, seven and two overall. Lot Nike five and one. Dell City 4 and 2. All three of those teams already clinched the playoff first. But as you can see, Norman and Putnam City North tied at 3 3. Putnam City, UConn, and Northwest all have been eliminated from playoff action. Norman, of course, if they beat Lot Nike and Putnam City North loses to UConn, the Tigers will make the playoff and most likely face Midwest City. Next up is our Plays of the Week, sponsored by the Athletic Village. Let's take a look at those right now.
Welcome back to the show. I'm Trey Anderson with the trivia this week. But first, let's start off with answering last week's question. The PGA Championship was never won by Arnold Palmer and Vince Lombardi last coach for the Washington Redskins. Now this week's question. Wins the record for the most errors in one World Series game and what is the fewest total yards gained by an NFL team in a single game? The answer will be up on next week's show. Now joining me is our guest this week, Scott Morris. Thank you for joining us, Scott. In a few minutes here, we're going to take a look at a feature that we put together of you, with some interviews of you and some of your friends. Um, this year, Norman High has had a lot of problems on the field and during the football season. But you being shuffled in and out with Todd Brown and everything, and now it seems that Coach Wade has finally decided to go with you as his starter. Do you think that that's going to help next week against Walt Mike? Yes, should I have a little more experience than uh, Todd does at this point because he plays most of the defense. And yeah, the, earlier this season we got this slow start. These last three games have really come on due to you know our our defense and offensive line have really come up and done a great job. Are you really looking forward to the lot night game? Win or do, you know whether you have a shot at the playoffs or not? Are we sure are. We want to you know, go with a victory you know for the seniors and for um, our team next year to come back on a high note. Now we're going to take a look at a feature we put together of Scott Morris this past week. Since the third grade, he used to be sooner and I was quarterback in flag football back then. But he surpassed me now. Well, this is third grade. He's a real good guy. Real good friend of mine. He's always been there when I need him. We've gone quite a hunt but for. He almost shot me a few times. I'm a better shot than he is. So he can't, cannot outshoot me. I, I shoot him any day of the week. We went to a we went to a um, tournament in uh, Bartlesville playing uh, freshman year, Legion baseball, and uh, Tyrone and Brandon Mosley are in their, are in their rooms and. Uh, Scott, Scott comes in and maybe the door open and Tyler wakes up with crackers all in his bed and shaving cream on his face and a toothpaste. And then they lock him out and they have to sleep out in the hall the rest of the night. My family's not really the first few months my sister went up there with you. And now it's really my fourth the family. And uh, you know, once she comes down, we you know, have dinner and everything and talk and stuff. But when I was close as we used to be, you know, I hope that game, I'm down there. Encourage me and keep my hopes up. And, and always there. Uh, I hope to, you know, try to go to a major college and hopefully play football and baseball and or just either one. And after that, I try to get a chiropractor. You know, get a chiropractic school for a couple of years and do that. I had like a, a water ski accident. My bag fell messed up and I just kind of embarrassed me and I like the water to kind of and kind of. Kind of thing I have, you know, I'm just like the, you know, pop my door off. And it's kind of interesting. Like Kevin said, I played center. Uh, my head center, I was a third ball player better than anybody out there, and I kind of wanted to be quarterback. And the next year, I was running back, so I got a little step closer. And so the next year, I was quarterback, and then I kept at it. Now I'm at the high school, and that's what I wanted to be. <laughs> to have what I have and do the things that I do and for us people I'm just listening I'm not going to go for that sports takes up a lot of your time you don't have, really, you don't have much time for clubs and uh, social groups but uh, you know if I have time for a while I probably would join a club or something you know sometimes I'm real hard to get along with you know most people will know but, but uh, a lot of people put up a lot of my, my stuff that I, I have to treat them and, you know, those are the they're real good friends. All the friends that I have are real good friends because they put up a lot of stuff that I do. 
just talk to us because it's our sign and, uh, you know, like the deep fly on, but then, then again, be serious upon us. And, uh, you know, if you're serious, you know that, you know, we're in danger because if you go around, they can be serious, and then the deep fly on, like driving, like the hurt or something. So I tend to look for people that are, you know, safe, but, you know, you, you know, kind of like that. My dad goes up to a lot of things. I have trouble when he says if you go out and I was out there playing football, baseball, or shooting basketball or something, and my son came to that. He came to me out in basketball. I hope you enjoyed the feature that gives a more in-depth look of the Tiger quarterback Scott Morris. A couple more questions, please, Scott, though, about next year. If you're only a junior this year, you're going to come back. And the Tigers are going to be a more experienced football team. Yeah, we will. It should be uh, really good. And we'll have a lot of fans and we'll have a lot of confidence. And I think it's make for us to get in the playoffs and have a shot at the state title. Well, next year, of course, you're going to hopefully be the quarterback again. Uh, of course, there might be somebody that steps up. But for you, what are you going to have to do in the offseason to get ready for next year? Well, I'm going to have to improve myself in every aspect of the game. You know, I'm going to have to work hard on the weights and uh, try to increase my speed and my strength. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope you have a great year next year. Uh, I'm sure we'll see you back again. Uh, and, of course, next week against Watt Mike, I hope you have a great game. We're going to take a look at the musical highlights of the past week now. a little bit about the playoff possibilities for the Norman Tigers, of course. The Tigers now 3-3, three and three, Putnam City North 3-3. Three and three. For the Tigers to get in, you know, basically last night they're going to have to beat Ike, first of all. And UConn, a team that is really hurting now with injuries and uh, really not one of the better football teams in the metro area, 
has to beat Putnam City North. That's right, Patrick. Um, Norman Tigers have a big game ahead of them this Friday at Lawton Of course, on the turf, you know, by kids from Norman. Yeah. Especially like our seniors when they were sophomores, they played Lawton High School on the turf. But you know, a lot of sophomores didn't play that year. And um, UConn's got a big game against Stewart because Stewart has a great running game, an outstanding running game, a lot of speed draw, a lot of counter plays to catch you off guard. And boom, they're going to score like that. But I look for UConn to play so tough against them because they're, they're young and experienced, but they got some real talent with him and a great passing quarterback. Norman, it's, uh, it's not unrealistic for them to beat Lot Mike. Many have said Ike is beatable. And, of course, last week they showed 13-7 in, in uh, overtime against Putnam City North, and they really didn't get on track offensively. But for UConn to beat Putnam City North, that's going to be the, a big thing uh, because, uh, you know, if Norman wins, they're going to have to just look and see if UConn can pull off the upset. Yes, that's right. Um, Putnam North has a pretty strong offense and a great defense as possessed by Mike Mike also. Um, North shut down Ike's offense last week, holding them, I think, 40 yards rushing and no yards passing. The secondary had an outstanding game for North against Ike, and I look for Norman to come out looking really tough and playing a lot of different coverages and hiding a lot of their coverages to keep Ike off guard so they can't get their passing game going. So that's what really they go to when their running game fails. Well, I hope everyone joins us next week. Well, of course, at 1030 on the overtime game of the week doubleheader, We'll have replay the Norman uh, Northwest Classroom game, and then following up with that, we'll have Lot Knight taking on Norman in the final game of the season for the Tigers. Um, I'm Patrick Owens for Trey Anderson and everyone else here at Overtime Sports Productions. Have a nice evening. Yeah.